Everyone's electric cars have solar panels. I've heard many people answer this question with, they're too expensive. Well, no. Saying they're too expensive isn't wrong per se, but the real reason electric cars don't have solar panels is because they'd be useless. This is a 100 watt solar panel. Well, ideally anyway, in general use it'll produce a little bit less than that, we'll call it 100 watts for simplicity's sake. If I let this sit and soak up the sun and generate 100 watts for an hour, it will have generated 100 watt hours of energy. That's how that unit works. If that 100 watt hours is added directly to the battery of an EV, how far will 100 watt hours get an EV down the road? One of the most efficient EVs on sale today is a rear wheel drive standard range model three. That car in mixed driving can easily achieve five miles per kilowatt hour which is 200 watt hours per mile. In other words, charging a base model three with this solar panel for an entire hour is enough to get it only half a mile down the road. And that's before you factor in charging losses and the fact that this probably didn't produce 100 watts continuously for that entire hour. That's why electric cars don't have solar panels. The number of solar panels you could fit on the small available surface area on a car would be effectively useless. So with that in mind, why is Aptera, why is Aptera building their cars covered in solar panels? <laughs> Aptera is a startup automaker based in Southern California, and this is what they're looking to bring to market. And it's called, well, Aptera, it doesn't have a model name. This is an Aptera Gamma prototype. It has a carbon composite body shell, three wheels, hub motors, it is mega efficient, and it is covered in solar panels. To open the door, and that will make it to production. Oh, thank you. It's getting no, really no, 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 no. Get back in there. This is the Gamma prototype. Behind me are three Alpha prototypes. They're less finished. This is a little bit more finished, but none of these really represent production. This is closer to production, but the interior of the production cars will be completely different. And they let me drive it? For being a really early prototype of a spaceshipy three-wheel thing, this feels surprisingly normal. And it's really roomy in here, too. <laughs> This is awesome! It goes, right? It goes! <laughs> wow, the steering's really good, too. Look at this! It's so... It feels so fun! This is way better than I expected. I expected a janky prototype. This drives like a real car. If you've heard of Aptera before, you likely know this as a solar-powered car. Their marketing plays pretty heavily into that, too. And indeed, this is a car that has solar panels built into it that it can charge from. But I don't think you should think of this as a solar powered car because the ability to charge from solar panels is just a byproduct of this car's real main purpose. The extreme pursuit of efficiency. This is a one liter bottle of gasoline. Okay, look, I forgot my prop at home. It's a gallon of coolant, but just use your imagination, all right? One US gallon of gasoline contains 33,700 watt hours worth of energy or 33.7 kilowatt hours, which means this one liter bottle contains 8.9 kilowatt hours. While there's an incredibly large amount of energy stored in this small one liter bottle of gasoline, the problem is how it's used. Internal combustion engines are incredibly inefficient. They operate at an efficiency of 25 to 35% usually on the lower end. The vast majority of this energy is lost as waste heat, so this one liter bottle of gasoline, 8.9 kilowatt hours worth, can only get this F-150 4.8 miles down the road, assuming 18 miles per gallon. Well, for a less gas guzzler example, it would take a modern Prius almost 16 miles down the road. Electric vehicles don't have this massive inefficiency built in. They typically use 80 to 90% of the available energy. So in the energy contained in this one liter bottle of gasoline, my Polestar 2 could travel 25 miles, the rear wheel drive model 3 example from earlier could drive 45 miles, and this Aptera, Aptera claims this car can hit an efficiency of 10 miles per kilowatt hour. 10! That's 100 watt hours per mile. So on the energy contained in this one liter bottle of gasoline, this thing could drive 89 miles. Now let's assume for a minute that they're not able to hit their efficiency goals and it can only hit 70% of their goal. That's still 62 miles on one liter of gas. I think that's a pretty clear illustration of how efficient this thing is, but I have another number to throw at you. 10 miles per kilowatt hour is the equivalent of 337 miles per gallon US. While we're on the subject of numbers, here's some fun, but not entirely relevant information about this pickup. The 18 miles per gallon this can achieve is equivalent to 0.5 miles per kilowatt hour, or 1,870 watt hours per mile. And the 36 gallon gas tank on board can hold 
1.2 megawatt hours of energy. If the Aptera could hold 1.2 megawatt hours of energy, it could drive for 12,000 miles without stopping. Do you think anyone will be taking their Aptera to a track day? I hope so. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no ABS in the prototype, nope. is there? <laughs> no. <laughs> so how are they achieving this extreme efficiency? Well, the most obvious way is aerodynamics. I mean, look at it. All the wheels are covered. It's shaped like a teardrop. It comes to a full taper in the back. This thing has a drag coefficient of 0 0.13. For a point of reference, a Mercedes EQS or a Lucid Air have a drag coefficient of 0 0.2, which is practically brick-like in comparison. I didn't notice this until later, but there is practically zero wind noise inside the Aptera, which is especially impressive when you consider this prototype has no sound deadening and the windows were down 15 miles an hour go. And that's at half power, that's really good. The production version will be twice as accelerative as this one. Watching the footage back, I think I might have discovered why the Gamma prototype was limited to half power. Watch the wheel covers. Yeah, I probably shouldn't, shouldn't twist that much. This video is brought to you by Factor. Ready to heat meals delivered straight to your door. Factor meals are delivered straight to your door in a chilled box. And all you have to do to prepare a Factor meal is pick your meal, in my case, jalapeno lime cheddar chicken, remove the cardboard, stab it twice to vent it. Let's pretend I'm doing that right now. And then pop it in your favorite microwave for two minutes. Factor meals are always incredibly easy, and more importantly, they're always very good. I usually go for the chef's choice options, but there's also keto, calorie smart, and vegan options if that's what you prefer. And in addition to that, you can also add on things like snacks and smoothies if you want to try and branch out from just regular old meals. If you want to try out Factor for yourself, and I highly recommend you do, go to factor75.com, use code AGINGWHEELS50 at checkout for 50% off your first box. If you don't, I will find you. No, I'm kidding. It's a completely empty threat. Now leave me alone, I'm gonna eat my factor meal. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now back to Aptera. Motors, gear reduction boxes, they add weight, they add places for friction to happen. So this has motors in the wheels, in wheel hub motors, one for each wheel, each rated at 50 kilowatts and 1,100 pound feet of torque. This is that hub motor with integrated dual caliper brakes. Each one is rated at 50 kilowatts, which gives the Aptera a total power of 150 kilowatts or 200 horsepower and 3,300 pound feet of torque. Because the motors are in the wheels with no gearbox, the at the motor and at the wheel torque numbers are the same thing. Zero to 60 on the production version will be around four seconds. And later on, there will be a variant available with just front wheel drive with one of the hub motors emitted. And as you might imagine, that will be slightly slower. The body is carbon composite. Slight correction, the body structure is forged carbon composite, but the exterior body panels are fiberglass. So despite having a 40 some odd kilowatt hour battery on board, this thing only weighs 1800 pounds. And lower weight means lower rolling resistance on the tires and less weight to push forward during acceleration. Making a car this efficient isn't complicated. It's just a matter of putting all those things together in one car. The result of this focus on efficiency is, like I said earlier, a claimed efficiency of 10 miles per kilowatt hour. An efficiency so high, it makes the addition of solar panels useful. That's what I mean when I say this car isn't about the solar power, it's about the efficiency. Having solar panels become useful is just a bonus byproduct. And it also helps with marketing. Solar powered car is a lot more catchy than really efficient car. And this is about half power right now? Yeah. <laughs> this is great! We're going 41 miles an hour indicated. I'm gonna stab it. <laughs> it has a little bit more grunt, grunt off the line. In the production version, the motors will basically be silent, which is a shame because listen to how cool the motors sound in this alpha prototype. <laughs> Because the Aptera makes such good use of its available energy, one hour of charging from this measly 100 watt solar panel is enough to get the Aptera nearly a mile down the road. But the Aptera doesn't just have 100 watts of solar. They managed to find a way to put 700 watts of solar on the Aptera, on the hood, on the dash, on the roof, and then some on the back there, which Aptera claims will be enough to add 40 miles of range per day from just charging on the sun. And by the way, they make these solar panels themselves in-house. The reason I don't think this should be thought of as a solar powered car is because the extreme efficiency that this thing has has far more benefits than just 
the ability to charge it from the sun. When Aptera goes into production, when, not if, the launch configuration will have a 40 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. A Nissan LEAF base model also has a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. In a LEAF, 40 kilowatt hours is good for about 150 miles of range. In the Aptera, 40 kilowatt hours get you 400 miles of range. Again, that's assuming their claimed efficiency of 10 miles per kilowatt hour. Even if they only hit 70% of their claimed efficiency, that's still 280 miles of range from 40 kilowatt hours. Those numbers are wild. 40-ish kilowatt hours is the launch variant, but later on they'll also offer a 20, 60, and nearly 100 kilowatt hour battery as options. Aptera refers to these as the 200, 600, and 1,000 mile range variants. Notice also the price. The launch price is projected to be only $33,000. Any EV can charge from a regular 120 volt wall outlet, but it's painfully slow. In a typical EV, the effective charge rate from a regular wall outlet is three, maybe four miles per hour. In the Aptera, from charging off a regular wall outlet, the effective charge rate is more like 10 miles per hour. That price. It's, it's, it's the most fun you can probably have <laughs> that, that price. <laughs> Aptera don't yet know what the rapid charge rate of the production Aptera will be, but they think it'll be somewhere between 40 and 60 kilowatts. 40 to 60 kilowatts on any regular EV would be painfully slow for rapid charging. But on the Aptera, because it's so efficient, that's an effective charge rate of 400 to 600 miles per hour. The interior, I don't, I don't want to spend much time talking about the interior, but it is really cool. None of this will make it into production. It'll be very different, but this is so interesting. This is, what'd you say, pineapple leather? Yeah. <laughs> for the center console and yeah. a weird a net cup holder thing up here Wait. and it's so roomy yeah in terms of like your headroom leg room that's all you know representative and yeah the yoke will, will just have tilt right this one doesn't but it'll feel pretty similar to that too you have all the vision screens so you can really see all around the vehicle tons of headroom there's tons of leg room i fit in here perfectly fine as six foot two you could sleep in the back of this there's so much room in the back it's amazing i need one of these while a lot of this interior will be different in the production version, the climate vent surrounding the main screen and the two rear view displays above the steering column are two elements that will make it to production. Cost. Where I live, the average yearly electricity cost is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Driving my Polestar 2 charged at my home electricity rate cost me about 3 to 4 cents per mile to drive, which is already super cheap and an order of magnitude less than comparable combustion vehicles. But the Aptera, if I were to charge it at my house, would cost me one penny per mile. And that's assuming no solar charging at all. You factor in solar charging and it becomes less than one penny per mile to drive this car on my electricity rate. Less than a penny. And of course, this huge efficiency means you don't need a very big battery to go long distances, which reduces cost, reduces weight, all in, making a car this efficient has loads of benefits. Using the energy you have available is a very good thing. Also, the charge port's back here. It's behind the license plate. This is where it'll be on the production version, too, and it will be NAX at launch. One of the only downsides of this car being so efficient is that other extra loads, like, say, climate control, are going to have a much more noticeable effect on your overall efficiency. So in the winter, these things will probably be a lot lower range. Just so you're aware of that in the future, you're probably going to see some clickbaity headlines of Aptera has 50% range in the winter because the heater has much more of an effect when the rest of the car doesn't draw much energy at all. Making that point even worse, at launch, for cost and time to market reasons, the Aptera will not have a heat pump. It'll have a resistive electric heater. <laughs> it's fun to toss. I should note, this is a three-wheeled car, but it's dramatically more stable than any other three-wheeled car I've driven. If you have stability concerns, don't. And because this is a three-wheeled vehicle, Aptera isn't required to conform to basically any safety regulations, but that doesn't mean they won't. This will get a full suite of safety features, and they are going to crash test them even though they're not required to. And it feels so nimble, made perhaps a little bit dirty, but it really feels good. Now the big question, will Aptera be able to go into production? I don't know. They've made a lot of headway in development. The difference between just the Alpha prototypes and the Gamma prototype is staggering. I have no doubt in their ability to make an amazing production car, but it all depends on funding. 
Aptera has their own YouTube channel where they're very open and honest about progress, so go check that out if you want to learn more. Okay, after coming home and reviewing the footage that you just watched, I was so positive about Aptera that the video came off a little bit like an advertisement. So let me be very clear about this. I paid my own way to go out to California to make that video. Aptera did not invite me. I emailed them and asked them if I could come make that video. And they have a referral program. I could give you a referral code and get discounts and collect points and stuff, but I'm not going to give you any of that because I want to make it very clear. I have zero financial incentive to praise anything about the company. In fact, this video would definitely do better if I spent 15 minutes telling you how stupid the car is. But I don't think it's stupid. I'm very excited for Aptera. I really hope they come to market. I really hope they make it a production. I'm definitely going to be placing a reservation. I want one of these things. Okay, thank you for watching. This is so exciting. <laughs> I was, oh wow, this is a blind spot. <laughs> there is a Nissan Rogue that is freaked out to see whatever this is. All right, and now we shall go. Oh my God, God, I love this. I've been driving it for what, a minute? <laughs> I'm going to put in a pre-order after this day, I think.